Hey everybody, welcome back to the ST3D video. Like always, I'm VJ. Today we're gonna to be talking about this bad boy right here, the Anycube i3 Mega. Go over the assembly process, and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy that is. So let's go ahead and get started by seeing what comes in the box. So this is what we're greeted with in the box. You got the top piece there, then you have the base with the power supply, everything included, which I really, really like. On here, as you can see, it has dual Z-rods, or lead screws as you want to call it. Um, the surface is not as big as the Creality CR10, but it is a good size, and it looks pretty firm as far as how it's put together. Okay, And it does have an LCD display screen as well. Now on the side, you'll notice there, guys, very important, please check your voltage before you start because if you don't do that you're gonna have some problems so before you plug it in go ahead and check that out okay now moving on we have the SD card that it comes with and that's just the adapter it actually gives you two which is surprising and after that we go on to the USB uh, now this also has a micro SD card slot on the side and it has all the instructions already downloaded onto that so if you guys want like a picture um, view of how to put this machine together, use that. Then this is your spool holder here. It's made out of acrylic. It's very easy, basic to put together, which I'll show you down the line. Then we have the spatula here and a couple of screws. It basically just takes eight screws to put together. You'll see a Z limiter switch there and all the necessary tools that you're going to need, along with the computer cable, power cable, and one cool thing about this guys which I was really really surprised is that it actually comes with an extra hot end you can see that the Bowden 2 is already attached so the works already done for you right there uh, it does come with a 0.4 nozzle one cool thing I really liked is the way they have it wired as you can see is basically a plug-and-play type which I did on my Creality CR10 to make the changing of the wires a lot easier right there um, the heating element and the temperature gauge um, are wired but basically you would just unplug the old one and plug this one in if you were ever having problems so that I thought was really really cool the next thing which really surprised me is they give you a whole spool of black PLA that is amazing most printer usually gives you um, a sample size but this one you actually get the full size that you would uh, order online and um, that really surprised me alright so the easiest way to get started guys you want to go and grab the bottom piece which has your power supply um, and everything needed there um, make sure your it's facing towards you towards the back then you take the top part where the motors are actually facing you and the symbol that you see there that says any cubic i3 mega facing the front go ahead and lift the bottom piece and slowly slide it in now you'll notice there are some screw holes there try to line it up as best as that you can alright so these are the holes that I was talking about there's two in the back and two in the front and four on the other side so you want to go ahead and just move the machine around just a little bit until you line up the holes and then go ahead and hand tighten those okay uh, the reason you want to do that is just to make sure the holes are lining up and once they line up then you can go ahead and tighten them with the allen key so I got the two in the back done here as you can see and two in the front here and I was having a little bit of difficulty so I actually did have to use the allen key but I never went all the way in I just tightened them a little bit so you want to do the same thing on the other side alright so the next step here is to go ahead and connect all the wiring and this is very easy there's only three wires here and they're color coordinated there's no way they could have made it any more simpler than what it is right here okay so um, what you want to do is go ahead and grab the wires just make sure you don't pull on it too much uh, one thing I would, rec uh, I would like to point out is if you see there's a clip at the top and that's the part it goes in and the clip stays stays towards the top right there on all three of these wiring okay so go ahead and um, plug these in just be careful when you push them in because you don't want to bend the pins so that's the only thing I would tell you so if you're having a hard time take it back out and plug it in and it doesn't matter what order you start in I just started at the bottom 
because I just found it to be a little bit easier. All right, now that we have the wires plugged in, there's something I want to point out to you. If you notice, the Bowden tube is connected to the hot end up here. Um, and instead of using a Bowden clip, what they do is they actually have zip tied it there. Do not take that zip tie off. Leave it the way it is. That's going to keep your tube in place and prevent it from falling out. But on the other end of the Bowden tube, if you notice right here where the filament feeds through, they actually do not have a zip tie here. They ha have left it empty. So I'd recommend that you print one of these little cl Bowden clips out, pop it in there to keep the tube on this side in, in its place. And this way it won't pop off. And from there, we're just going to move on to the assembly of the spool folder. Alright guys, so the easiest way to put the spool holder together that I found, um, first thing you want to do is make sure the any cube sign is facing outwards. Um, I already put one on, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Go ahead and take a little nut here, put one finger, pop that into place like so. And then use the other finger to hold it in place. And all you're going to do is just slide it into the grooves right there. And take the screw, pop it in, and just hand tighten it until it's tight enough. And then you can always use the Allen key to finish the job. So just go ahead and do this with all four corners, and then we'll go from there. All right, so once you have everything assembled, all you want to do now is just take the little rod that it came with, pop it into place, and there you go. Spool holder ready to go. Alright guys, so next step, uh, we're going to go and put this on. And if you're wondering what this is, uh, this has just been dangling around, dangling around the whole installation. Uh, basically, this is just a filament sensor. Keep in mind the arrow needs to go up. And the cool thing is, this is actually magnetic. So what we're going to do is take this right there and just pop it into place and that's all there is to it there you go Alright guys, so there you have it, the assembly on the Anycubic i3 Mega. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you want to see more content along these lines, anything related to 3D printing, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below guys. You know I get back to every single one that you guys leave me. Uh, just a quick heads up, this is a future video that will be coming out for Kira Supports. So keep an eye out on that, and like always, good luck and happy printing.